Voters across Germany are casting their votes in a national election that will decide who succeeds Angela Merkel as Chancellor. It is one of the most uncertain German elections in living memory, with opinion polls too close to call. Now, many Germans have left their decision of which party to vote for until the very last moment. Others have already made their choice via postal ballot. The latest opinion polls show the centre-left Social Democrats with a slight lead over Merkel's Conservative Christian Democrats. Meanwhile, the environment-focused Green Party is expected to come third, but could play a decisive role in forming a coalition. And we can cross straight to our political correspondent, Nina Hase, who's outside the Chancellor, uh, Chancellery Angela Merkel's office. Nina, thanks for joining us. It is a big day here in Germany. Can you give us a sense of how people are feeling? Well, this has been an extremely turbulent, dynamic election campaign uh, that was uh, dominated by um, rising and sinking polls for the main contenders in this race to succeed Angela Merkel. Of course, there are three hopefuls that do want to move into this office behind me, the Chancellery, but here in Germany we elect parties. And so the parties um, have had a neck-and-neck -neck race, especially the Social Democrats and the Conservatives. And, of course, um, it is an extremely unconventional um, and very, very interesting election campaign because of two reasons. One, the incumbent chancellor is not running again. Usually we vote our chancellors out of office or they have to resign because of scandals. But this time around, Angela Merkel just chose that she wants to hand over the job to somebody else. And then secondly, there is no clear successor and no party will be able to go it alone. So they will all depend on coalitions. And there are currently as many as six coalition options on the table that are fairly realistic. So it will come down to watching how the smaller parties fare tonight at 6 p.m. when the results come in to find out, to get a hint of who might move into this office behind me. Nina, as you mentioned, the massive thing about this election is that it's the first time in 16 years that Angela Merkel um, is not one of the, the candidates for Chancellor. How much would you say will she be missed? It is interesting because, of course, Angela Merkel is um, extremely well known. She is almost already a historic figure, but she uh, here in Germany, the picture is divided. Now, she is by far the most popular politician. 64% uh, of Germans in a recent poll said that they were happy or, ex or very happy with how she's doing her job. But then there was another poll that said that 52% of Germans say that they will not miss Angela Merkel as chancellor. And you can understand that after 16 years of somebody in office, it is time for change. The younger people don't know anybody else than uh, Angela Merkel. And so it is possibly time for a new government. Now, when we uh, look back at this campaign, what have, the, what have the biggest moments been for you? This was a campaign where there were ups and downs for all the three main candidates, all the chancellor candidates that were officially put forward by their parties, from the Conservatives, the Social Democrats and from the Greens. And every one of them uh, led the polls at one point in time. So that was definitely very interesting to watch with the Conservatives first in the lead. And then the Greens took over with Annalena Baerbock with this drive for change. And then Olaf Scholz took over from the Social Democrats. But of course, there's a narrow margin now between him and Amin Lashid. But I've got to say that I think the most striking point in this campaign was the deadly floods in August because that refocused uh, the debate. It was more about content. It was about how to tackle the climate crisis here in Germany because everybody agreed that it is related, those extreme weather events is, are related to climate uh, change. And then, I mean, Lashid committed some mistakes that we'll probably hear more about in the course of the day, uh, where he didn't behave like somebody who wants to run a country should, probably. Now, uh, polling stations are now open. How much will voter turnout today matter? It will matter significantly just a week 
before the election. So last week, some 40% of Germans said that they hadn't made up their minds yet, that they were undecided whether to go to the polls and then who to vote for. And so the smaller parties will probably gain some votes, but maybe the bigger parties, the big 10 parties, the Conservatives, the Social Democrats and the Greens will also have managed to mobilize some more voters, which would make it an even tighter race. And so the result tonight at 6 p.m. is really completely unpredictable. Political correspondent Nina Haase, thanks so much. Now, the buzz about who would replace Angela Merkel began in late 2018 when she announced that she would not be seeking re-election. But campaigning only began in, er uh, in earnest a few months ago, and it has been an eventful season. Let's take a look back now at some of the key moments that have defined this race. <laughs> Boisterous crowds. Fuel for the fight. Grand plans. Growth and prosperity, stability, a balanced budget. Promises. I want a higher minimum wage. And hard truth. The climate crisis is happening now, and we have to act now in 2021. Twists and turns. It was the most dramatic campaign in years. Armin Laschet, Merkel's chosen successor, began the race after a bruising battle, just to secure the backing of his own Conservative bloc. We have not made it easy for ourselves because there is something at stake. His rival Social Democrat crowned Olaf Scholz almost unanimously. He entered the race with low expectations after the party's years of fading popularity. Another CDU-CSU-led government it will cost Germany prosperity, jobs and a future. We can't let this happen. The Greens chose Annalena Baerbock to make the case that their time had come. Baerbock positioned herself as the change candidate and led the polls back in the spring. Olaf Scholz and On climate protection, there isn't one millimetre between Olaf Scholz and Armin Laschet. That was the worst of the sparring. Keep your guard up, Laschet is instructed. Advice he could have done with weeks earlier, when floods devastated his home state. For Laschet, an opportunity to demonstrate leadership. Then this happened. As the German president consoled victims, Laschet was caught laughing in the background. The moment seemed to cement public feeling that he wasn't ready for the top job. Someone next to me made a stupid remark and I laughed about it. That annoys me, that was stupid, but I can't undo it. Baerbock too ran into trouble, hit with allegations she had exaggerated her CV and plagiarised sections of her book. A pitfall of German political life, support for her dwindled. Steady Schultz reaped the benefits, though he faced an uncomfortable grilling over a money laundering scandal that took place under his watch as finance minister. His no throws approach, a selling point. I'm applying to be chancellor, not a circus ringmaster. Sometimes it felt like that. Yet his message resonated, with polls giving him a comfortable lead. As election day neared, faltering Laschet needed a boost. Bratwurst is the right thing for the final sprint. More than meat, he needed Merkel to revive his fortunes, calling his predecessor to a wet and windy rally. As German Chancellor, Armin Laschet would continue the course of attracting new jobs here and making employment possible. A late bid by a hugely popular Chancellor to turn the tide of public opinion one last time.
And I'm joined now by our chief international editor, Richard Walker, to look back on this election campaign. Richard, tell us, are Germans voting today for a, a party or for a preferred chancellor? Well, of course, Annie, the way the electoral system works in Germany and in, in, in many European countries is that you're not voting for a chancellor, you're voting for a party. And that party then goes to parliament, tries to drum up a coalition, and then uh, a chancellor emerges from that. But, of course, the three main parties have chancellor candidates. And what we've seen in the course of this election campaign, I think really well summed up by Matthew there, is, is a campaign that really was focused very, very heavily on these candidates. And it's no wonder, really. I mean, Angela Merkel has been in power for 16 years. She's been this extraordinary phenomenon here. There are so many younger voters like, under the age of 30 or so who've known no other chancellor. Um, who are really thinking about this, you know, in a completely different way for the first time in many years. So, uh, essentially, what we've seen during the course of the summer is the voters sort of kicking the tyres on all of these candidates. Um, and as we saw in that report, uh, Olaf Scholz is the one who's emerged as, as, as the most popular. And the polling, you know, many, much of the polling around these candidates really shows that he's the person that Germans seem to trust more than the other two. Um, but the question is whether that's going to be enough to get him over the line. And that's where questions about parties do come in, because the Social Democrats have been very divided for many years. There are doubts about the Social Democrats. So that's really going to be the question whether it, he is dragged down by his party or whether the Conservatives are dragged down by their less popular candidate. That's right, because, I mean, as we just heard, all three candidates come with some pretty significant um, baggage. How much have the scandals that we've heard about shaped voters' perceptions of these candidates? They have very much. And the, you know, Olaf Scholz, what people often say about him is he's the candidate who's made the fewest mistakes. Uh, and the other two candidates, Armin Laschet of the Conservatives and uh, Annalena Baerbock of the Greens, uh, who have suffered... Uh, under the scrutiny of this election campaign uh, during the course of the last few months. Um, we saw that moment in the report there where Armin Laschet was spotted in the background uh, laughing during this scene of tragedy after these floods that hit his own state that he governed so hard. That had a, a really sudden and profound impact on, on his popularity ratings, raising questions of whether this person really had the sort of seriousness of mind to be chancellor. Annalena Baerbock has been a different issue with her. It's been really relating to her relative lack of experience. I mean, she's somebody who came up in, through politics essentially as a sort of party worker, um, hasn't held any sort of executive experience before. Um, and there have been some slips that she made, which we saw in the report there, which have, have added to this sense that maybe she's not quite ready. Um, so, yeah, it's Schultz who's emerged as the, as the person who has made the fewest mistakes, but also uh, somebody who seems steady um, and seems pretty close to the mould of Angela Merkel. And Angela Merkel is bowing out with still the most popular politician in Germany, which after 16 years is really an extraordinary uh, uh, thing. So. So he's hoping that some of, you know, some of the kind of credit that she gets for just being steady as she goes uh, actually transfers over to him. Right, so let's talk about um, Angela Merkel. Both Armin Laschet and Olaf Scholz have been campaigning as, as Merkel's successor. So how crucial has Merkel's legacy been uh, to this election race? Well, yeah, I mean, it is the sort of... It's the framework in which this election is taking place, isn't it? And... She's looked at in two ways, really. She's looked at as somebody who has been an incredible stabilizing influence, not just in Germany, but in Europe over the last 16 years. Somebody who has been effective at managing crises, um, who has, you know, steered Germany through the euro crisis, financial crisis, refugee crisis, corona crisis. I mean, it's just like crisis after crisis. The, the critical perspective of her is that she's been handling these crises, but not really setting a, a strategic agenda for the future. Um, and particularly on the issue of climate change, which has been very much at the fore in this election campaign, more than a, in any campaign uh, beforehand, um, she's faced a lot of criticism for not getting further ahead of the problem. Um, and so I think that's really the sort of the frame that is set for this campaign. And the three candidates are really you know, all in their own way trying to fill her shoes. But I think what one quite interesting perspective on this election is it's 
it's it's essentially a question about how much change does Germany want. And both Laschet and Scholz are pretty closely associated with Merkel, having, you know, one is a member of her party, one is her finance minister, a member of her government. Annalena Baerbock is the only one of those three who really represents a significant departure, much more bold action on climate change, a generational change as well. And it seems that the Germans, they want some change, but maybe not that much change. We will see. DW Chief International Editor Richard Walker, thanks so much. Now, German President Frank-Walter Steinmeier has just cast his ballot here in Berlin. Early this morning, he called on all Germans who are eligible to vote to cast their ballot, saying every vote counts, adding that those who do not vote are allowing others to make their decisions for them. And he had this message for voters and poll workers. Germans are now casting their ballots. Around 60 million voters are deciding who will be elected to the next parliament. Voters are the lifeblood of democracy, and those who volunteer at the polls perform a service to the community. My thanks to everyone working at polling places across Germany. The German presidency is a mainly ceremonial position, but the president does have an important role after the election which is to swear in the new chancellor and the new cabinet. Now, the German electoral system is fairly complicated, but there are valid reasons for that. The location where Germans cast their vote, their love for paper trails, or how they try to prevent election fraud. Here's an explanation of the ins and outs of the German election. It's the end of an era. After 16 years, Angela Merkel won't be Chancellor anymore. So who's taking over? To determine that, Germany is holding federal elections. And that's a complicated process. But for good reasons. First thing you need to know, Germans don't vote directly for their Chancellor. They vote to elect members of Parliament, the Bundestag. They do that every four years. Unlike in many other countries, all German citizens are automatically registered to vote once they turn 18. No matter their gender, religion or political conviction. 60.4 million people will be eligible in the 2021 election. Every vote counts the same. Germans can either cast their vote by mail or in person on election day. Polling places are in schools, museums, you name it. Poll workers ensure an accurate, efficient and secure process. We are extremely diligent when it comes to the election process. For instance, we check the election register every time someone comes in, making sure they're actually eligible to vote. Once that's checked, the voter is good to go. But there are rules. Voting happens alone. No one else sees what happens inside the voting booth or which boxes on the ballot are checked. And no one is permitted to influence the voter's choice. Curtains closed, no selfies allowed. On the ballot, there is not just one box to check, but two. With the first box, Germans vote for a candidate from their constituency. The one with the majority of votes automatically joins Parliament. With the second box, voters choose a political party. This second vote determines the overall percentage each party gets in the Bundestag, Germany's federal parliament. And in order for any party to enter the Bundestag, it has to win at least 5% of the second vote. That's to prevent smaller splinter parties and legislative gridlock. There are a few more details. For example, the overhang mandates. Sometimes a party will receive more direct parliament seats through the first vote. But this is really complicated, so we'll explain that another time. Speaking of complicated, no German election happens without a paper trail. Not much is digitised, for security reasons. We have an old-school process here in Germany. We still use ballot papers, not digital votes. That makes it very transparent for our citizens. 
We've had very good experience with that in these 70 years. But, surprise, some digitalization has been happening in the meantime. For the final reporting of votes, poll workers can use, for example, email or the good old telephone. At 6 p.m. on election day, the first exit polls will be announced. Once the final results are counted, we move on to the next step. Remember, the election results determine the relative strengths of the parties in the Bundestag. Once the members are set, they team up in coalitions to form a majority. Then they elect the Chancellor. Each step of the process is necessary to ensure a transparent and accurate voting system.